Everybody, it's Tyler here at the World Championship, checking team number 2056, OP Robotics. What an incredible season OP has had. Big comeback from last year. I mean, you started three weeks late last year, now you got the entire season. We know what this robot now looks like and what it has to bring. OP Robotics, number three in the FRC top 25, but number one in my heart. This is an incredible machine. I love this robot. It's my favorite one here of the year. Take a look at what 2056 has to offer. We're talking about just Overall, their build strategy, how simple robots can be super effective, especially just iterating over time as well. Talk about that intake, incredible arm, first time using Swervi, so much to talk about here about 2056 coming up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Tyler, let's start out on this robot here, talking about your gripper and how you approached it uh, from this game. Uh, What's gone into it, and is there anything unique or advice you have for other teams on how you approach the uh, Charge Up Challenge? Yeah, so at the beginning of the season, uh, we knew that Cheesy Poofs had a great 2019 season. So we took a look at their robot in 2019 and basically built ours uh, around that. So it's a pneumatically actuated gripper and top roller. We use the top roller to be able to suck in the cubes, and then there's a limit switch at the back that basically tells us that we're holding that cube. And then we use a beam brake to be able to sense when we have a cone. And if we go underneath the gripper, at our first event, we had a big problem with dropping cones. So we wanted to be able to find a way that we could link the two arms together, um, but without having to use a locking mechanism. So basically, we just uh, brought up this gear design uh, that linked the two together easily. Um, and after that, we've had a great impro Im improvise. Sorry, we've uh, seen great improvements on our performance. Yeah, I really love these polycarb gears here. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. So as you went through, like, what a cool overall this structure. When you're looking at uh, initial concepts for it, was this kind of like the initial concept you just went with and went forward? Or what um, yeah, so uh, our first idea was, like, somehow to bring gears into it. But we were like, to be able to do this, we must uh, use, like, a really big gear. Sure. Um, but then we have a CNC router at home. So Ty built it up, and we came up with this. Uh, Belrush, we're going to go into the uh, arm a bit more to so talk about what's gone into that and I know you got some cool stuff I was like looking inside you got you can see through on the gears and stuff that's really awesome so talk to me about what's gone to this entire structure here so a lot of the arm geometry and design of it and the way this sprocket and all of this links together it's heavily based off our 2011 robot so it has the very similar three tube design with a really big sprocket and same thing over here we have one tube here with the three tube geometry and another sprocket right here and then you can see our uh, gearboxes over here, they have these nice 3D printed covers. These are all custom gearboxes. We make them uh, with our CNC mill, all these plates. They're lightened on the inside. And these 3D printed covers really prevent any grease from flying out, anything falling in. And we have this polycarb cover because we, realistically, it doesn't do anything. It just looks really nice. We could have made it out of aluminum, but we thought it would look really cool if we could see inside the gearbox. And then this thing right here has like 138 to 1 gear reduction. And then over here, we have two stages in there, another stage in here, and your final stage is right here. And that total reduction is about 133 to 1. And what's really nice is this arm is counterbalanced with these gas shocks right here. Uh, they're two 50-pound gas shocks, and it means that the arm load, a lot of the arm load is taken up by the gas shocks, and the motor really doesn't have to work hard at all. And the arm just becomes like weight neutral like around here. Because our arm doesn't go all the way around, it's limited to only at this position. We like It didn't matter to us, but some teams have a pivot where they can pivot in each direction, and that is harder to counterbalance. And again, we did it in 2011, and it worked really well. Yeah, overall, great structure that has gone into this. And like you said, just an elegant machine as we go all the way through. Uh, Irish, let's talk more about on the, uh, well, a couple things you've been doing, right? So you're doing Swerve, uh, you know, for on your team. you got a couple custom things with that as well, too. And let's uh, start to wrap up on the rest of your robot. So 2056 is not known for Swerve. So first year doing it, we came across a lot of challenges. Um, one of those being the code. We found it was not the best and not the most accurate. So we wrote custom code so we could get the utmost output that we could possibly get from these Swerve modules. Uh, we also have the custom covers to protect any 
anything that goes in. Um, so we also built a wooden chassis and put the swerve because it was our first year. It took approximately like three months to get it actually operational and like moving. So that was a really, really big challenge we overcame this year. Um, but one thing we've always done, or for the last couple of years have done very well, is LEDs. Um, we find it's a great way of communication from like opposite sides, especially this year with the HP being all the way on the other side of the field. So we use it a lot for communication for cones, cubes, but we also use it to signal in case something is wrong. So if there is a problem in the robot, for example, the limelight is not connected, um, the LEDs will run red and we know that the limelight's not connected. I love that. That's really cool, man. Like you, we do hear a lot of teams who are doing some sort of driver feedback, but having that extra uh, type of feedback, I think that's a unique thing I really haven't heard too many teams talk about. That's really cool. We use it uh, to set autos as well to know exactly what auto we're going to run just in case we accidentally set it to the wrong thing. So if we're running a blue auto, it'll the lights will flash blue. And if we're running red, they'll flash red. One thing I had to ask you is coming into the championships here, uh, any big changes uh, from Ontario DCMP uh, here into the World Championship? Not very big changes. We have these minor horns, I guess you could call them. Um, one problem we had is when the arm was coming out and the robot was spinning, the rollers would get caught on the edge of the swerve modules and the rollers would start ripping up. So this was just an easy fix that Ty came up with. So it just like funnels it in and it doesn't get caught on any corners. Well, OP Robotics, phenomenal season here. We wish you best of luck here at World Championships. Uh, I can't wait to see us perform in the field in person as well, too. I'm looking very much uh, forward to that. So thanks a lot for taking the time, and good luck the rest of the way to you all. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first team experience and offers high quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.